So you've decided to start hosting some stuff at home. You've built up your home lab and you've started to self-host some services. And up until now, the way that you access these services was by VPN or IP address. Wouldn't it be great if you could access your self-hosted services over a fully qualified domain name and maybe even free? Well, after this, you can. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about setting up a dynamic DNS with DuckDNS. As a quick reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you want to continue the conversation about dynamic DNS there, we can. So let's talk about using a dynamic DNS service. As I mentioned before, you might not have a domain yet. You might be accessing some of your service over an IP address. But you know that your IP address at home can change at any time. And you also know that it's really hard to remember your IP address. So you have a couple of options. One, you can pay for a static IP. That will keep your IP address from changing whenever your ISP decides to change it. Or you can go and purchase a domain, but you'll still need to figure out how to update DNS with your new IP address when it changes. Or you can set something up like Dynamic DNS, which we're gonna talk about today. Dynamic DNS is a great way to automatically update your DNS record when your IP changes. This is great for things like a VPN connection, a self-hosted website, a wiki, remote access, or really anything you expose through your firewall. And a nice thing is the dynamic DNS we're gonna set up today is absolutely free and only takes a couple of minutes. So today, in this video, we're gonna set up Duck DNS. We'll walk through a few ways to set up Duck DNS, but ultimately we'll settle on Docker, Rancher, and Kubernetes. So if you're not familiar with Rancher, Rancher is an easy way to get Kubernetes at home, which then gives you Docker. If you need help setting this up, I've got a complete tutorial that walks you through setting up Rancher, Docker, and Kubernetes. It will have you up and going in just a couple of minutes. But if you want to use plain old Docker, we'll be walking through that too. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing you'll want to do is go out to duckdns.org. Here, you'll find the many ways to create an account. It looks like they only support OAuth providers like Google, Reddit, GitHub, Twitter, and Persona, but most people should have one of these accounts. So I'm going to choose to sign in with Google to create my account. Then I'll choose one of my Google accounts. And once you create an account, you're on your dashboard page. So on our dashboard, we can see the account we created, we can see the account type, we can see our token, we'll use this here in a little bit, we can see when it was generated and when the account was created. And in the domains panel, we can start creating subdomains. So it looks like we get up to five. So let's create a couple. So I created one called My Awesome Website and it was automatically added to my account. Here, you'll see it automatically detected our IP address as well. It looks like we get up to five, so let's create another one. Okay, so I created another one, my other awesome website. I figured this domain would have been taken by now. But anyway, so once we've done that, we're ready to install DuckDNS. So let's look at their install docs. So here you'll see a wide range of ways we can install DuckDNS. Everything from Linux to Windows to Mac to even hardware routers. These are all great options if you don't have any infrastructure in place like we do. But the one thing we don't see on here is Docker. We have Docker infrastructure in place and we'd like to use that. And this seems like a great workload to run within your Docker infrastructure. So I went out to linuxserver.io and found the image there. If you're not familiar with linuxserver.io, they manage a lot of my favorite Docker images. They have great documentation, a consistent API, and they keep them up to date. So once we're here, we'll just go into documentation and we'll look for DuckDNS. And right here is their Docker image along with the Docker command. So if you're using plain old Docker, this is pretty straightforward. We're going to call Docker create. We're going to give our container a name, and then we're going to pass in some environment variables. So two environment variables, PUID and PGID, we'll get that from the server that's running Docker. And then TZ, that's our time zone. Then we have an environment variable of subdomains. This will be a comma separated list of our subdomains that we chose on DuckDNS. And remember, with the free version, we get up to five. The next environment variable is token. And this is the token that we see on our dashboard. The next one is log underscore file, and it looks like it takes a Boolean. This is whether or not you wanna write your log file out to your volume, which leads us into our volume. So we can link our Docker volume here. So on the right side, we're mapping our containers config folder to a path on our server. And in here will be your log file if you chose to turn that on. Now, these are both optional and you don't really need to do them, but we'll set them up for the sake of this tutorial. And next is a flag restart unless stopped. And this helps if your container starts crashing, it will automatically restart that container. 
And last, Linux server slash duck DNS is the Docker registry we're going to pull from. And if we wanted to use plain old Docker and we were remoted into our server, we can run this command and spin this up in just a couple of seconds. And we would have duck DNS running. But let's move on to Rancher in Kubernetes and get it set up there. So back in our Rancher server, we'll go to global, cluster, and default cluster. Here we'll see all of our workloads. And now we need to deploy a new workload to it. So let's click deploy. And here we'll want to map some of those Docker arguments to our Rancher workload. So we're going to name this DuckDNS. We're going to change the Docker image to Linux server slash DuckDNS. Now you can use the tag latest if you want, but it should automatically use latest if you don't specify a tag. So that's why you see latest and sometimes you don't. We're going to keep the namespace to default. And then this time we don't need to add any ports. This workload won't be exposed. So let's hop down to environment variables and let's add the first two, PUID and PGID. Now the way that we get these is from our rancher server that's going to run this workload. Here you can see my ID is 1001. So 1001 for PUID and 1001 for PGID. Next we'll add TZ for time zone and mine is America slash Chicago. The next variable is token and we'll get this from our DuckDNS dashboard. The next one we'll add is log underscore file and this will be for our log file. And we'll set this to true so we can create a log file locally. Next, we need to add a volume. So we'll go down here to volumes and click add volume. Now you have a lot of choices for volumes. In this tutorial, I'm just gonna use by mount a directory from a node, but choose what works for you. So I'm gonna name this volume DuckDNS and I'm gonna hop down to our mount point. And this is the mount point inside of the container. And that's right here on the right side, slash config. So slash config. In our path on node, we haven't set up yet, so let's create that real quick. So if we go back into our server, let's just create a DuckDNS folder. So mkdir DuckDNS, and then let's go in that folder and we'll create a config folder. And once we've created that folder, let's echo out the path. pwd, and mine slash home slash techno tim slash DuckDNS slash config. So let's copy that to Rancher. Once we have that, there's one more thing I like to adjust, and that's our scaling slash upgrade policy. I typically choose kill all pods, then start new. There's one more thing we need to do, and that's actually get our subdomains from DuckDNS. So let's go into DuckDNS. Let's take note of the two subdomains I created. So mine are my awesome website and my other awesome website. So now we'll add another environment variable called subdomains. And this is going to be a comma separated list of those subdomains. And so here I added my awesome website, comma, my other awesome website. And if things look good, we can scroll down here and click launch. So we can see our workload spinning up. Let's go into the logs and it looks like it's running before we even got to the logs. So let's take a look at the logs. Here we can see the container start up. Here we can see our UID and our GID. Here we can see that our IP was updated. Here we can see the cron job that they scheduled to run this periodically. And here we can see it piped out to a log. So let's go check DuckDNS to make sure our IP address is getting updated. And if we go out to DuckDNS, it looks like they were just updated. So let's check the logs on our server just to make sure. So remember we created this config folder that should house our logs. So if we type ls, we should see our log. And let's cat this out. And we can see right here, my IP was updated today. Just a quick note, you won't see this log unless your IP address changes. This won't be the same logs you see in the standard out coming from the Docker container. This is DuckDNS's own internal log that will write to this file when your IP address changes. So don't worry about this getting filled up with a bunch of nonsense. So that's great that DuckDNS updated their subdomain, but we still wanna to check to make sure that name servers around the world are getting updated too. So a website that I've used for many years to do this is Dig Web Interface. Here, I typically enter the DNS name and check all the resolvers. So let's enter our first one, myawesomewebsite.duckdns.org. Here I typically change the name servers to all, and then I click dig. And here this will go out and query most of the name servers that are out there. The IP that comes back here should match the IP address you see on DuckDNS. And we can see here, it does. So let's check our other one just to be sure. And here we go, if we look through this list, this IP should match what we see on DuckDNS. And so this is a really simple way to get a domain name and have that domain name automatically update when your IP address changes. Now, I know that there are tons of ways to use this, but the ways that I've used it in the past were for remote access, VPN, blog, or even a wiki. And if you use any of those services, you'll have to remember to configure your firewall properly. And if you are gonna host one of those, I highly recommend getting a certificate as well. 
If you need help getting a certificate with Let's Encrypt and want to set up a reverse proxy with something like Traffic, check out my tutorial on how to do this with Docker, Kubernetes, and Rancher. This will ensure at least that connection is secure, but the rest of it is going to be up to you. So what do you think of DuckDNS? What do you think of dynamic DNSs as a whole? Have you gone out and bought a domain name yet? Or are you using something like DuckDNS? What creative ways have you found to use something like dynamic DNS? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. And while you're in the comments, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have more questions, you can always join my live stream. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, hop in my stream and I'd love to have you. So thanks so much for watching and till next time, stream on my friends. Contributing to an open source project doesn't just mean contributing code. You know, con contributing to open source projects means contributing to the project in any way that you can. You know, that might be writing better documentation. That might be help with, um, with issues, explaining issues, or organizing issues, or referencing issues, or answering questions. You know, writing documentation, um, being in the forums, you know, uh, and being a member of that community. So.